Hello folks, Jason Christman, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. The plans for today's video have somewhat changed, and let me explain why. A few weeks back, roughly four weeks I believe, um, I installed burlap on a couple of my nucleus colonies, and then on a third colony I installed the mountain camp method. What I wanted to do was use my broodminder sensors to monitor the humidity in the colonies and see if the burlap or the mountain camp method played any adjustment on the humidity. Would it lower it? Would it make it stay the same? Or would it make it go up? Here's where we are right now. Colony number 29 did not make the last cold snap. If you remember back in my video on installing the burlap in the mountain camp, um, I spoke on colony 29 saying they were extremely weak and I was surprised that they made it this far. Well that colony fell on its face and died actually not long after I installed that burlap. So using that colony for a test is out the window. Colony 803, um, it's the colony I installed the mountain camp method on and it's also the colony that has the hive scale under it from Broodminder. That colony still doing quite well and I'm going to share the information from the Broodminder with you today. The other colony the third colony, colony number 805, um, the other colony that got the burlap, they're doing quite well, but I messed up, folks. I knew that the broodminder in that colony does not measure um, humidity, but I wasn't thinking straight when I started this test, and for some reason I was thinking it did. So what I'm telling you is, is I have nothing to read from colony 805 except for temperature. No humidity readings, just because that broodminder sensor, um, that particular one, does not measure humidity. And I should have known that. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess we'll just call it a brain fart. Um, how about we just call it a ladybug fart? That sounds a lot better than a brain fart. A ladybug fart? In the hell is that? I'm going to tell you. Ladybug fart is when the boss messes up. Yeah, when the boss messes up. Everybody says, you're the boss of me. Well, I'm going to blame you, Baybug. Yeah, you're to blame. You can turn your back to me. Go ahead. Give me a cold shoulder. So what I want to do is I want to share the results or the information I have from Colony 803. Um, but I will tell you, it doesn't look like the mountain camp played any difference on the humidity in the colony. So let's hop on over here on the computer and I'll show you what I've got um, as far as information from the Broodminder and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so let's take a closer look at Colony 803. The first thing I want to highlight is that we are showing 90 days of use with the Broodminder. So we're going to scroll on down here to the humidity and the next thing I want to point out is this number one that you see. This number one is telling me I have a note on January 29th um, and the note says added mountain camp so that would be the date that I added the mountain camp to colony 803 now if we go back up here right above the number one you're going to notice that the humidity that day was 90 percent within colony 803 that's relatively high in my opinion I don't exactly know um, the desired humidity but 90 percent seems really high to me now, if we look before I added the mountain camp, just come across here, this darker uh, pink um, line, or the maroon line, I guess, uh, we can see we had a 92%. We had it down in the 80s. Here we've got um, an 87%. So you can see it was just all over the place. Here we have a 64%. Um, so, like I say, it was just all over the place before adding the mountain camp. And I don't really notice much of a difference after adding the mountain camp. I mean, here we've got um, an 87%, an 86%. It drops down to 75% and then goes back up to 85%. But it doesn't necessarily go back into the 90s, which is a good thing. We come really close there at 89, 
but nothing back into the 90s. So if you look, here's the number one, and then you look on both sides of the line of the number one, you're going to see sporadic up and down like a roller coaster. And I'm not going to say there's much difference after adding the mountain camp. Um, so I have to say that this is a bust. Adding mountain camp did nothing for the colony in lowering the humidity. After seeing this chart, I'd be interested in um, hearing your thoughts on this. Um, maybe next winter we can do some better testing without ladybug farts. So what do you think? Do you think the mountain camp played any tool on the humidity? Doesn't look like it to me. Um, I guess really what needs to happen, and I know this from my sumac testing, is you need to do more than three colonies. And at the same time, you can't be having ladybug farts. You need to make sure that each one of the colonies has a broodminder that reads humidity. Um, that was a big flub up on my part, and I apologize, folks. Um, I just need to slow down sometimes, think things out a little bit more before charging forward. Sometimes I just want to keep charging forward and not pay attention to my surroundings and slow down and think about things. But that's what I need to do. Slow, 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 slow down. So we're having a big warm up this weekend. It's going to reach 70 degrees today and tomorrow. And then Monday we get a lot of rain and then back to cold again. I don't really see the warm weather hanging around this early in March. So I got to expect that we've got plenty of cold weather coming. Actually, um, if you listen to the local news, they say March is when we get our most measurable snowfalls. So don't think we're out of the woods yet, folks. But um, I do expect the 70 degree weather today and tomorrow to start cracking open the buds on the maple trees. And when I see that first sign of pollen, I'm going to be sticking on uh, some pollen patties on my colonies. Um, hopefully by tomorrow I'll be sticking them on. So tune in next week, because look what I got. Hive Alive Pollen Patties. These are brand new on the market, folks. Brand new. And I've got a case of them here. We're going to stick them on the bees, and we're going to see how the bees respond. take a look at these. These patties are a little bit different than I'm used to seeing. Um, they are still a one pound patty, but they're a little bit narrower than I'm used to seeing, and they're a lot longer than I'm used to seeing. I like that personally. For feeding nukes, I can cut it right in half, and I can turn a case of 10 into 20 real quick. And it also keeps me from putting too much pollen patty in there and small hive beetles taking advantage of it. So smaller pieces, double the amount, that works for me. So make sure you tune in next week so you can see uh, the application of the Hive Alive pollen patties. Um, if you're interested in ordering these, I am an affiliate for Hive Alive and I'll leave a link down in the video description where you can go ahead and order you a case of these to try out for your bees. So I'm very excited about getting these on the, on the hives and I'm very excited about the warm weather today and the chance to play in the bees. So. By the time you guys see this, we've only got a few more hours of nice weather and then it's going to crap out and go back to rain and cold for us. So I hope everybody that's getting this warm weather takes advantage of it, peeks in on their hives, and they find that their bees are still doing well. Um, thanks for watching and uh, if you enjoyed the video, slam that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next week folks. Thanks for watching JC's Bees. <laughs>